Hello, everybody. Two seconds, I'm bringing you in. Where people come in. What's up, Art Turner? What's up, man? Yo! I figured I'd bring you in on your homeboy, Pharrell. <laughs> Good morning. I, I, I jumped the gun by getting here on time and uh, not letting you set up your song choice. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> My homeboy, Pharrell. So here, here's an interesting thing just to start off with. We just okay. got filming uh, about a month ago with the city of Virginia Beach, uh, uh -huh. a commercial to air across the country. And Pharrell is actually the voiceover for the whole thing Very and nice. writing a song for it specifically for the, the, uh, the commercial. Cool. Very yeah. good. Very good. What's so, up, Steel Green? What's up, Matt? What's up, uh, Grandon Tripp? Uh, Joe Monin? Um, Jeffrey Butler? Art Turning? Um, Okay, now, before we start, we're going to start off with some silly questions. Yeah. Um, and I ask everyone this. So, um, here we are. All right, your favorite subject in high school? Probably math. Oh, okay. All right. And, and that definitely comes in handy now. Take that back. It was actually biology class, like marine biology. Ocean. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, favorite but, food? Say that again? But math was up there. Yeah, it comes okay. in here everything that we're doing, right? Yeah. Um, favorite food? Favorite food lately has been, uh, I've really, like, I'm really, like, into nutrition and diet and the whole nine yards. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in diet, too. I, I eat too much. <laughs> Um, I'm from I, New Orleans, so I'm from New Orleans, and I live in New York. So I know, I know. Uh, I've been eating a lot of uh, of sushi, homemade sushi. Okay, so and you're and you're you by the water, so you can always get fresh fish. Yeah, but I, I actually don't eat a lot of fish, so a lot of it is like mango cucumber rolls and like odd things Cal like California rolls. Yeah, stuff like that. All right, all right. Um, your favorite band? Favorite band? Um, I kind of typically go old school, like Rolling Stones, and I got really big into the Black Keys for a long time. Okay. But I've been on like this kind of newer uh, jazz. -y. I don't even know what it's what what you would really call it. Um, yeah, there's a, a band called the California Honey Drop. That I've been listening to, and they're, and they're jazzy, like old jazz, new jazz, kind of uh, like Leon Bridges type stuff. Not even jazz, just like like it's instrumentals. Got, it's got a little bit of soul to it. It's got okay, all right. Um, did did you see the um, the interview with Alabama Woodworker? Yeah, he's a jazz guy. That guy, he likes the swing music. Huh? <laughs> he's, yeah. He, He's he knows like not not that kind of jazz at all. I'm I'm more like the stuff that you're just like. <laughs> um, favorite movie. What was that? Your favorite movie. Favorite movie. Um, so I have a 13 year old, and uh, we've been watching all the Marvel things, all the okay. Marvel, everything like that. So those are kind of up there at the top of the list. Um, we actually watched Predator last. How was that? Like old school Predator? Did right. Do you, you ever see that? Yeah, but that, for for thirteen year old? Yeah, he's he's into it. He's he's okay. yeah, that's fine. It's crazy because the stuff that we used to think was really scary and like over the top, like right. it's nothing. it's like nothing to them. It's light work now. It's nothing. It's really it's it's actually funny watching it because like all the all the the costumes that make up it's really cheesy now it is <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah sure scared the crap out of us 
Right, exactly. Um, your favorite song? Favorite what? Song. Song? Yeah, favorite song. Song, like music song? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I couldn't say if you were saying song or saw. Excuse, excuse my southern accent. <laughs> favorite song? Um, hmm. I don't know if I have a favorite song. Really? I, uh, this, actually, here, here's a good one for you. When I'm, uh, when I need a, like, a little bit of energy, and this is totally against everything that I was just talking about a minute ago, I go to one song in particular. But I wouldn't say it's my favorite song, but it's, like, my get me in the right state of mind song. What's that? Uh, Eminem's Eight Mile soundtrack. So, All right. I, I'm not a big, like, hip-hop rap guy. I'm not into any of that stuff, but, like, I always could, like... M music moves you. That's like the fight song, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, bike or car? Ooh. Uh, I'm really into old cars. So I've got a, um, I've got, it's sitting in my driveway. It doesn't move right now, but I've got my grandfather's 65 Chevy 2 Nova. And I had, it, I, had a, I had a 1970 Nova. That was my first car. So you, yours was like real slant. The back. Hatchback. Yeah, the hatchback. The, this last year that they made like the really boxy actually here. It's like <laughs> yep. so it's sentimental. It's it was my grandfather's. He sold it to my dad. Um my dad uh, mom yelled at him like for years, 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 like the thing sat in our backyard and uh and he kept it. He was like, get rid of that thing. He was like, No, 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 the kids are gonna uh, want to drive it one day and I have two older brothers so my oldest brother he uh he turns and they started working the, on what yeah, the, the sounds a little choppy the, it's choppy yeah the sounds a little choppy okay uh you know what I can do I don't know if this would help I've got some headphones maybe Let's hold try. on let give it a shot yep my Zoom calls, they tell me to put my, my head, my earpiece in, and I lost my AirPods They're running. I don't know what happened to them. Yeah, I've, I've lost them once and replaced them. Man, those things are expensive. Yeah. Freaking so now, you're not, now you're better, but go ahead. We can go with that. How about now? I think that's better. Okay, cool. Right. So, so my oldest brother started working on this thing, and... Uh, He's just, he's like financial advisor guy. He likes to wear a suit every day to work. And he gave up after a while and traded it to my middle brother for a pair of jeans. And then my middle brother worked on it for a while and gave up. And then I just took over. They're, they're like four and six years older than I am. And I took over when I was 16, 17. And I drove the thing for like four or five years. I've learned, that's kind of like, I've always been super mechanical. Uh -huh. And it's where I've, I learned a lot of like, sanding and body work type stuff um, back then. And uh, yeah, so I drove it all through college. I ended up blowing the transmission in the thing. And Where, where'd you go to college? I went to James Madison University. Right. Yeah. Um, pepperoni or cheese? Ooh, I don't really eat a lot of meat. Okay. So I, I would say almond cheese. All right. Is, is that weird? No, I'm, I'm a vegetarian since 91. All right, good. I like it. Um, you know, let, let's back up on the car thing. Okay. Right? I, I have a 1951 split window Beetle crotch cooler. Um, I have a 54, which is the one with the hard tail lights. Okay. Um, I have a 72 911 Targa. Um, now, before that, I had a whole bunch of other projects. I, I, I had a total of 14 cars at once. Really? And that's kind of how I got into this. I had a, doing the machine work, building the engines. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, restoring cars is way too expensive. Yeah. You don't get, and, and, and there's not much you get back other than looking at it. Yeah. So, so I, I, I um, left that alone. Um, I, still, I still got the cars. But yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, a real collector uh, like that anymore. Beer or wine? 
Do you uh, do you drive them? Yeah. You still yeah. drive them quite a bit? Not quite a bit, but less. Since I've started this, no. Yeah. They're all parked. I have, I have a 57 Chris Craft boat that I was supposed to work on and never got to. <laughs> I got a I got a seventy one Harley sitting in my uh, in my my other room over there, nice. and uh, it's just sitting there. It's been there for five years now, six years right. now. Yeah, I, I got to get on the ball. Um, okay, so we're at beer beer or wine. I don't drink a lot. It's like very very rare. I I, I heard uh, Alabama saying the same thing. Um, if I do, it's probably a glass of wine. Okay, all right. I, I worked. I worked. I worked in a brewery for a long time. I think I just beard myself out. Yeah, um, I never drank. And I was At all. Never. And I was a bartender for twenty years. But That's I never great. drank because I wanted to be a politician. <laughs> I, um, shouldn't you drink if you want to be a politician? <laughs> closer to your mom or dad. Um, my dad, all growing up, and who passed away a few years ago. So, so now my mom's, my mom's, uh, I mean, they're, they're both around. My dad was always just one of like, I've, like I said, two older brothers, there's three of us. Uh, he was just always another big kid. Like my friends used to come over to my house and hang out at my house when I wasn't there with my dad. That's, that's good. So, yeah. And it's great. Like, and he, he did it. I think he did it one because he loved us obviously. Right. And Right. and, And he was a very strong father figure, but then two, like he wanted to keep us close so that he could always keep track of us and make sure we weren't doing anything stupid. And he was always in the know, right? right. So, so now, like, all my, friend, all my son's, like, buddies and everything, like, I'm pretty young to have a 13-year-old kid. Right. And, and so they're all, they all come over, and I, I hang out with them all the time and, like, just make them a priority, you know? Yep, kind of the same thing. Cool. Um, is your mommy that still together? Uh, well, my dad passed away, and then oh, yeah, that's uh, right. Sorry to hear that. my mom lives close by, um, but we're not as we're not super close, super close. But like, I, you know, I, I spend some time with her. I go over there quite often. Okay, all right. Um, have you ever slept outside overnight sober? Like camping? Yeah. Okay. Love all to camp. Right. All right. Have you ever been too drunk to get home? Long, long time ago. All right. The last time you cried? Huh. Probably, to be 100% honest, probably about six months ago. Why? Uh, actually, maybe a little bit longer than that. Just completely overwhelmed and stressed out. And like, I think as men, we're not, supposed to, we're not supposed to like share <laughs> our emotions, right? <laughs> And I just, I like had a moment where I was just, there's so much going on with all of this and then just in the personal life and like all that. Right. And I pulled up in my driveway and he was inside and I was just like, all right, I got to get it all out right now. I I sat sat in my car for like probably 45 minutes and just did it. I was just like, all right, I got up and I walked inside and I was good to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, what we do is tough. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. And a lot of times it's lonely. Super lonely. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, so that, let me ask you this. You're married, correct? No? Yeah. <laughs> Kids? My kid, my kid is, is in Louisiana. He, my kid's at Ole Miss. He's okay. 21. Okay. 22. Okay. Yeah. Um, so they're out of the house. He, he's out of the house. He's been out of the house. I, I, he, he lives in Louisiana. I live okay. Here. Okay. Gotcha. So he would come with me during the summer. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, um, no, to that, no, his, his, his mom and I never, you know, never married. Never. Gotcha. Lived. We've always, we've always been, um, separate. Yep. Separate, separate. We fought for, he's 21 now. We fought for 15 years, for, 16 uh, years. As far as custody and things like that go? No. Just in general, just tooth and nail fought. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anything. I was there. And um, one day, it was like, I was like, you seem better. And she's like, no, I'm not. I just don't have any reason to fight you. It's mm. like, oh, good. But yeah, um, yeah, no, um, we were never married. Um, so so I, I married uh, my, a really good friend of mine uh, when I was younger and we were married for like five years, but we fought a lot too. I, and you know, you just, it, it, there's, especially in youth more, there's, um, I just didn't know myself. We were young and dumb. Both of us were. And we all are. yeah. And, and my, uh, you know, from there, that was about 12 years ago. And I, I held resentment in the beginning about the whole thing. And we fought tooth and nail back and forth afterwards you know, about the kids and stuff like that. And how I have a, kids, how, you have one kid. So I have one 13 year old that biologically is mine. And then, uh, she had a, another son before we got married and he's 17, but he's my stepson. He'll always be my stepson. Your like, son. Yeah. He's my son. I right. say stepson because he's got a great dad and it just like, I, I Listen, used to, the, I used to only, just say son all the time. And people were like, wait, that's, that's his son. And I'm like, yeah, he's my the, stepson. The, the only thing that's better than having one great dad is having two. Yeah. He's in trouble. He, he doesn't, he doesn't even get it. Like he gets no slack. He, so okay. he, and, and he spends quite a bit of time. He's always spent quite a bit of time with us ever since then. But you know, I raised my 13 year old. He lives with me 24 seven. So between. So, uh, so you are a single parent? Single parent, yeah. Okay. So okay. he he's with me. He's with me seven days a week. And, and the big uh, boy comes back and forth. Yeah, he lives at his dad's house, but he comes by quite often. He uh, he um, texted me this morning because he wanted a haircut. I, I cut his hair all the time for him. <laughs> so, uh, like cool. he like like uh, last week, I showed him how to change his oil. He didn't know how to change his oil, so he wanted to learn how to change his oil. For the first great age for that. Great yeah. time to learn. He's starting to pick up all the mechanical stuff, so it's it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, and you know, and, and as a, as a young man, he needs that. Yeah, I feel um, like that's that's a, even if you don't go into a line of work like what we're doing, people just don't know how to pick up a hammer and a screwdriver and a drill and a circular saw or whatever. All that and, stuff is and basic. Do that. Yeah, they just people all, just don't know how to do it anymore. Yep, yeah, it's all basic. Um, also, you know, the change in the oil. I I. I I didn't, my dad was a mechanic, so I would help him with stuff, but I was in D.C. until my freshman year of college, I saved money, purchased a car with no driver's license, had a buddy that was at Georgetown, I worked in the White House, and we drove home. Wow. And at that point, my dad told me what I needed to do to, uh, to keep the car running. It was changed the oil. And when I found out, you take the filter out, there's a plug under the bottom, it drains, you put the plug back in, you put the filter back on, and you put in four or five quarts of oil. I was like, yeah. it's a 20 minute job. It's, yeah. that's what he found out the other day. And it, it's also, but it's also one of those things that if you like, don't do it just right, and you don't like seal the rubber gasket when you put yes. the thing back on, you know, something could happen or if, or if the, the bolt's not threaded in correctly. So I, I even told him, I was like, even if you go and pay 40 bucks, 50 bucks to get this done, you at least know exactly what needs to be done. Like, yep. right. like all the way down to little things. Like I, I was like, Hey, you write the date on the oil filter so that you know that this was the oil filter that was changed, you know? So, so nobody can pull stuff over for you. You just need, got to know what you're talking about. You don't even right. have to be an expert on it. You just need to know what you're, you know, have exactly. some understanding. You got to and know, and know you're not being taken. Yeah. Okay, so let's start from high school. Okay. And we're going to start from high school. We're going to go to where you are now. Yeah, for sure. And then into that, we do a shop tour. And you have a yard, right? Uh, a little bit. And there's not a ton in it right now. So we'll, we'll get to that when we get out yep, there. Exactly. Um, so we, uh, at a high school, at a high school, I graduated, um, graduated in 2000. Okay. And then went to JMU and I went up there. So actually I'm going to go back a little bit, even though I know you're saying high school, when I was little, that same, 
the same dad that we were just talking about, right? He was painting, uh, painting our den because we were getting new carpet. And I was like six or seven. And I was like, hey, I want to help. So knowing he was getting new carpet, he was like, yeah, yeah, no problem. He gave me a paintbrush and he told me to do the trim, the baseboard, all the way around the whole room. So I did it. And he said he never painted another day in his life after that because I painted a perfectly straight line, like freehand. I didn't need tape. I didn't need anything else. I just wow. went around the whole room and did it. But I started getting pawned out to all his friends and then like family friends. And then that turned into, um, hey, can you hang this uh, new towel rack up in my bathroom after you paint? And then, you know, have you ever done tile? And it, it led from one thing to another. So I kind of went through all the trades in the houses you know, I was building decks for people. I was putting up fences for people. Um, and I get bored really easily. I'm sure you're probably a little bit of the same, same way. Like if you do the same thing over and over again, like the first chair I made was really fun. And then I made a hundred of the same chair and I was like, okay, well, let, let me do a different chair kind of deal. Right. Same thing back then, like remodeled bathrooms. I ended up, uh, you know, I, I did all that stuff all through high school and into college. And so I didn't know what I wanted to do when I went to college. So I was just like, you know what? I'll get a business management degree. I'll learn how to run a business in theory, right? And, um, and, and then I'll, I'll flip houses when I get older. Okay, so did you go to college right after high school? Or? I did. Okay. Because um, I think, I, I feel like as far as like when I was growing up, that was what we were supposed to do. You know, yeah, I, and, I, and I think things have changed big time. I don't think college is nearly as important, you know, as it used to be. If you don't have a specific track that you need to go to college for, you can learn this stuff and stay a lot less debt free or a lot yeah. more debt free. Yeah. So anyway, went to college, honestly, got a business management degree. Everything I've learned about business has come from running my own business years later. I, I mean, I don't remember any of that stuff. Right. So I still have student loan debt though, which kind of stinks, but it's, yeah. it's, it, it's getting closer. Um, so that said, uh, graduated college in December. I grew up, I mean, I, I'm literally sitting half a mile from the ocean front right now from the beach. Nice. Um, I grew up right here in Virginia beach and, uh, worked in surf shops and stuff too, growing up and knew a lot of sales reps. And when I graduated college, um, I've surfed my whole life ended up going to Costa Rica for kind of like a little vacation deal. Uh, got down there, decided I met some people, met a guy that was running a surf shop and, and uh, he was like, yeah, come work here. And so I ended up uh, moving down there for about three, five months, somewhere around there. And um, I had, you have to come back every three months to renew your visa. And when I did, I, I started doing some home improvement stuff. I was staying in a deck and fixing a bunch of, you know, slats on it and stuff like that for a guy who was a sales rep here in Virginia Beach. And uh, he was like, what are you going to do now? I told him, well, I got an opportunity to move down and take care of somebody's property in Costa Rica. Because if you're down there and you own property and you don't live there and somebody else moves in, there's squatters laws. And they can just take over after a certain amount of time. I don't remember what all the time periods and stuff are, but right. so, so they had people that would live there and take care of the property and just do the maintenance and stuff like that. So I was going to get, I was going to get to live on the beach in Costa Rica for, you know, I was going to take the job for two or three years. So that happened. He, he was asking me and I was like, well, I don't know. And he was like, well, I got a job for you as a sales rep if you want. And it was a really big brand surf brand. So I was like, okay. And then uh, the day before I was leaving, my best friend that I was telling you about uh, told me she was in love with me. And so I left and got back. And when I got back, somebody broke into my apartment that I was living in and stole five surfboards, about a thousand dollars worth of camera equipment, a um, couple hundred bucks. And I was like, you know what? I think the universe is telling me that I'm supposed to be back in Virginia Beach doing something else. So I ended up getting married. I ended up taking a job as a sales rep and I worked in the surf industry for about seven years. Um, and during that time period, you know, I learned, I, I worked for a brand that was owned by VF corporation. So vanity fair. Uh, and I, I did, um, 
you know, I, I, I learned a lot of marketing stuff from them. I learned, uh, they taught, taught me a lot about sales, the whole nine yards. Like we, we, I sat in meetings for weekends on time, sales meetings, you know, tw twice a year at least and picked up as much as I could, which a lot of it is still applicable today. Um, and then from there, it, uh, as I was going through my marriage ending, I was also finding myself in the stores doing a lot of the display work. So I was building, you know, big sandal racks and I was building, you know, benches and things like that. And uh, I just, that's, that's always what I've loved to do as well. So, so how, how, how'd you get that work? Uh, just because I was, because I was, you were there. I was there and it wasn't even, I wasn't getting paid for that. It was, I was getting paid for it because this was my territory. This was my account. This was, I wanted to do everything I possibly could to make their sales turn and turn faster. And so I was trying to do like, I was just building cool sections and the brand, you know, would send me, uh, I was using a lot of actual, um, the beetle pine from out in California. You know what I'm talking about? The powder post, powder post beetle gets into the pine trees and then it eats it and it leaves this really cool kind of blue streaking in it. Yes. But they have to go through and clear these trees out to try to stop these beetles from getting to them. So we were, they, were, they were reclaiming and using a lot of that wood, um, which is kind of where, like, all that said, moving forward, you know, we specialize in reclaimed lumber. And I think a lot of the surf industry and the surf business and just being – out in, out in the ocean and, uh, and all that stuff has paid a big, you know, subconsciously, if nothing else, has is, is played a big part in this for me because I, I, I want to use wood that's reclaimed as much as possible. Like whether it's urban lumber, that's a, a tree that's getting taken down so it's not turning into firewood or, you know, the majority, like I said, of what we use is, is old growth reclaimed oak from all around our region down here, Virginia, North Carolina, West Virginia. Uh, and... Oh, um, oh, oh, oh. When you say reclaim oak, meaning from buildings. Yeah. So buildings, barns, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of it. Actually, like, I'm sitting here actually at a table right now. Here, I can turn this thing around, right? Yeah. Like, this stuff. And you'll see, like, even the end grain. Like, you get some with some wider grain, but, I mean, look at the density and the tightness. Like, this yeah. is the majority of what we use. Right and then now. on top of that, like, you just don't get, I don't care how much you try to distress something, you're not going to get character like that, right. you know? You, the, the oxidation that comes from the nails over, over the years that they've been stuck inside a piece of wood. So it, that's the stuff that we really kind of specialize in. Okay. So uh, surf industry, um, that was coming to an end. My marriage had come to an end. I, very involved father. And I was like, man, I would, I'm spending way too much time on the road. And I want to do something different. And uh, somebody had asked me to, I had a coffee table at my house. Somebody had asked me to make one for them. Um, a girl that I was dating after I was uh, divorced or separated asked me to make a little buffet shelf unit for her. And somebody was like, you should start an Etsy store. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to build furniture for a living. Everybody thought I was nuts. Nuts, right? They were like, what are you doing? You're leaving a great job that not very many people get. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's, this is what I'm going to do. So, and I've just always asked the question why. And I'm driven by growth. Like, I just, that's part of the reason I was talking about getting bored so easily earlier. Right. Um, and I just wanted to know why everything was done the way it was done. And I just, you know, the web education that you can get nowadays. And I just kept on pushing the envelope farther and farther and farther of what I knew. And uh, it's led me to now running a business, building furniture. So. Cool. Cool. So. How long were you doing both before you left to do the furniture by itself? Wait. So you stopped your office job and then jumped into making furniture with no clients? None. Did you have money saved? Not much. 
I just did it. You just did it. Cold mm-hmm. turkey. Pretty much. I mean, I had a little bit. I knew I had like a month or two of commission still coming in. You know, because you get paid a couple months a couple months back. So right. Yeah, I mean, I, that's I did that. I ended up. I, I owned a house at the time. I ended up selling my house. I was. I had a. a you know, I for sake of numbers, probably 1500 square foot house and a 200, 300 square foot shed. Right. And I was spending 90% of my time in the shed and 10% of my time in the house. So I was like, this doesn't make sense. Why don't I go get a big shop someplace and get rid of the house? So I sold it, which financially was probably not the smartest move. I think they're selling for like $300,000 more in the neighborhood now. I'm like, geez, I should have figured out how to save that thing. Um, Right. So, but yeah, I, I just, I got a bigger shop. I ran into a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine uh, that I, my dad used to coach us baseball when we were little kids and uh, told him what I was doing. And he was like, no way. He was like, I'm opening up a brewery. He was like, maybe you can sell some tables in my brewery. And I was like, well, maybe I should just build your brewery for you. And I'll build all the tables and I'll build all the bar, bar stools and the bar top and everything. And, uh, I mean, that was about a month in and he like that paid my bills for the time being. And, you know, I didn't charge nearly what I should have back then. I didn't know any better. But then again, he shouldn't even have given me the job. I did everything except for the electrical and the plumbing in the place. Yeah, everything works out. Yeah. So so from that, it was word of mouth. Yeah, it's it's, uh, everything I've done has been grown word of mouth. Right. Okay. so how... How did and you I, know where to- and I think we're on I think we're on um I was doing some math not too long ago, and this isn't full build outs, but I think we're on probably about twenty or twenty five restaurants that we've done now um, so do you do you mostly do restaurants? We do a lot of restaurants, but i it's it's interesting i we kind of just fell into that um and it, it was, it's one of those things where for me, from a marketing perspective, we brand the edges of all of our tables, right? And so if we can do restaurants, that is a way for, for us to get our brand out to different places. So I could have gone and opened a little tiny boutique shop, right? And, and what I decided to do is say, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I might have a thousand people that walk into it over the course of the year, Why don't I go out and focus on these bigger spaces that I can make live in collections because they're all different, right? So each restaurant that we do has got a little bit different look to it. Right. And if we do that, then we now have thousands of people coming in looking at these collections of furniture that we're making with our logo on them. So as far as branding goes, marketing goes, we were able to spread really quickly in our region in our in our area and kind of scale a little bit that way ultimately my goal our goal is to continue doing the restaurants and and focus in more on tables and stuff like that you know i know martin was saying the money was in the chairs and i'm not a chair maker um i and i think there's an extreme talent that goes with all that stuff and i admire those guys greatly um but we just have focused in and we've been able to to capture this this market right here now that me, said, that said though, if we sell forty tables to a restaurant, our margin's much smaller than if we sell one table forty times. So the goal is to eventually get it to a point where we're doing both, but we're also really, really capitalizing on just basic tables for people, uh, dining tables, kitchen tables, coffee tables, things along those lines. So what what I've found. Um, and Mark's right, there's a lot of money in chairs. And yeah. chairs require a certain talent. But in my opinion, in order for you to grow, yeah. you got to get in the chairs. Really? Because if you're doing restaurants, you want to do as much of that work as possible. Yeah, for sure. There's a, there's a lot of money you're leaving on the table by only putting a top in there. You want to do the chairs. Are you, you guys building the chairs? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Yeah, not not to to any um, you know large extent, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's that's the um, that's the direction that I'm going in. And we've and, done, and, and I, you know, I'm I'm 
we've done quite a few bar stools and things like that. Don't get me wrong. Right. So we have we have spent time and much like we we have gone in that direction, just right. not to the extent that Martin Martin was talking about. Right. Yeah. There's um, um David Dior has a church in, in uh, Connecticut. Uh, teaches. Um, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. You good. He teaches um, how to. Uh, he teaches classes on making his chairs, mm -hmm. and I signed up to take the class, but never got, never got. Because of the uh, whole COVID a couple thing. Times. And then this happened, and uh, yeah. one thing led to another. You um, made a post about that not too long ago, I think. You were talking about. Yeah, we we what we were talking about then was um, how to choose the wood from a log to use yeah. in a chair. In the, in the video that you were on, that you were like, no, 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 this is just about picking wood. This isn't business stuff, Pat. Come on. <laughs> right. You guys, right. You guys look like you were searching for something. So I was like, hey, how about some business conversation here? Like, where, where, is it, where, where are you going? You can't find anything. I got questions. Right. Um, and he, he, probably, he, probably, he probably could have answered that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So there's a, there's a and, and you do your own metal work as well. We do, yeah. How big is your crew? So I've got two guys right now besides myself. Um, okay. And we need, to, we need to bring on a third guy. I was talking to somebody, and I was hoping that he could come on, but he's got a situation where his, um, one of his family members has an autoimmune disease, and he's just quarantined up. Laying low. Yeah. Right. So what, 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 what would this third guy do? Uh, kind of shop labor. Okay. So I, I kind of, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this. What I found is, um, who is it? Caleb, I think, was talking about how he doesn't like to hire guys that, wasn't it, I think it was Caleb, right? Yeah, he, he has one with experience. And I, I agree 100%. Um, I like to bring people on that haven't really done a lot of this stuff. But they might have they might have done some carpentry stuff, and they know how to use some tools, right? They're comfortable around them. Yeah, but okay, but let me say though, let me say though, because my, my biggest issue, yeah, personnel, it's my biggest missing, biggest biggest issue, yeah. But in order for you to bring a guy home to learn and to do this, he's got to be a good guy. So that's where I was getting at. I, I I've hired guys that are really good furniture makers. But they're like, I've just had problems with them personality wise and everything else. The guys that I have in my shop right now, the two guys that I have working for me, and they've both been, one of them started as an intern when he was in college and worked two summers and then came back and worked full time. Um, and then the other one I met, the first day I met him, I was like, hey, you want to come work for me? And he's been with me for two years. He's kind of, he's my shop manager now. But both of those guys have a high degree. I, I heard Warren Buffett say this one time. They both have a high degree of integrity. And they're both very conscious. And they're bo they both have a, a good extreme amount of, like, self-awareness and focus. Yeah. You see, and I'll if, if I have somebody like that, I can sh – this is not rocket science what we do. I can no. show them how to do it easily. And I'd rather do it that way so they, they have a clean slate to start from. They don't have another shop that, that have, that's been telling them how to do something a certain way. Yeah. 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 And, that, and that's the thing when you get guys that don't care. Yeah. That don't want to learn. Um, that don't study. Or just counting down the minutes to the end of the day. Yeah. They don't have any, don't have any real drive other than the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, you can't train that guy. Mm-mm. Because he doesn't want to be trained. So I think when, when that is being said, that the leaving that factor out is that they got a quality guy and trained a quality guy. Yeah. So then that guy becomes a quality guy. You can't train the guy to, to care, to, to be conscientious because it's a part of who they are. And, and the cool thing is, and I, I have a business coach too. Like I, I talk to him about all of what we're talking about right now, like the mentality aspect of it. I think that's probably yeah. 80% of, of everything that we do as business owners, as people in life, like all of that. Like I'm really into that side of the world. And it's, it's interesting because um, 
like to 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 find guys that have that kind of like that you can see that mindset in is is really rare. It's it's tough to do. Um, I I don't know where I was going to go with that, but anyway. Yeah. So um. So that's good. Okay. So. Oh, I'll tell you what it was. Uh, the one guy PJ he told me the the first day that we were talking he said, um, I had he, he was like I had a boss tell me a few years ago that my goal is to solve problems, not create problems for him. Right. I was like, huh. Okay, you solve problems for me, we're in a good place. So. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, and, right. and, and, and the biggest thing is like, at the end of the day, everything falls back on you and I, right? As business yep. owners, our goal should be to put systems in place so that people can succeed. Yeah. People can succeed. And, and that the, the, everything just runs smoothly because if they don't, if somebody doesn't have the right answer and they don't know how to do it, it's because we didn't train them properly. So you're absolutely right. Um, so, what do you feel is your biggest challenge? Who? Oh, my biggest challenge is uh, I'm reading a book by this guy, Mike McCollowitz, right now. He's got a book called Profit okay. First, and then he's got another book called Fix This Next. And uh, in Fix This Next, he was talking about this thing called a double helix. And what it is is small business owners, solopreneurs that get stuck in this, in this back and forth of having to sell, sell, sell over here, and then having to run over and get the operations done. And then when they're getting operations done, the selling's not being done 100%. And then, uh, then like, it's just a juggle back and forth where like I, I'm trying to streamline all that kind of stuff because like we've had a couple of really good months. Well, now we're, now we're slightly behind on, on the work that we need to get out the door. And it's, I've, I've self-funded everything. I've never, never taken on investment. I've never done and gotten any yeah. kind of money, you know, yeah, and, and I, I need, I, I really need to find, a, um, I've been scouring the Craigslists and the whole nine yards and I, I, we really need to find a wide belt sander pretty badly. But then in order to do that, we need to upgrade our dust collection and, you know, get a better air air. Well, okay. Let me, let me tell you, um, we're talking about people. I work for a guy who, I mean, a guy worked for me and I was trying to get the dust collection going. This whole thing was, Oh, you can't get the dust. You can't I'm trying to get the wide belt sander going. Mm -hmm. You can't get that unless you get a full overhead dust collection. Yeah. No. no. Oh, really? No, no. And, and the only reason, and, and he would say, he had a lot of opinions about stuff. Mm -hmm. He didn't know. He didn't know Jack. He read it somewhere, and he was trapped by what he read. He didn't know Jack. So, so how are you removing all the... the... We, I, I have um, a two-bag dust collector. Hooked up to a wide belt? Yeah. Really? I got a three head. Interesting. All you need is all, all, it need, all it needs to be is a strong system. Yeah. That's okay. all you need. All right. And, and let me tell you, I did that because I saw another guy do it. Interesting. I saw two guys do it. Yeah. Just turn it on. Because So where did you get your where did you get your sander? I got my sander from an auction, RS auction. Did you? Now my my sander is three head. Mm -hmm. Right? And it was built in 1970 as a door sander. So the rollers in the bottom are 12 inches wide, <laughs> which is, it was, it was a very heavy machine. Yeah. And I called, and, and I found this out from um, George Ripson at Tri-State Machinery Repair. Okay. Um, he's very good. We called him up, we started talking. So I put the camera on and I'm walking him through it. And he's like, how big are those rollers? Because he thought they were six inches. I'm like, no, man, they're not six inches. He goes, Robert, check that. And he checked it, and I gave him the serving them. When he came back, he goes, you have a very, he goes, there was only three of your machines made, and they were, they were made to do doors. You have a very heavy machine. So huh. I kind of got lucky um, to have a very industrial machine. And the three belts you put on there are 60, mm -hmm. 80, and 180. Wow. So if I'm, if, 
So in one pass, it's coming out 180, and you're good to go. So like you're finished handed. Well, it depends. It depends. Let's say, for example, I put epoxy on tables, and I got to leave the epoxy out. Mm -hmm. Then I got to run it through 60 twice. Yeah. To get it flat. And then I have to turn on the final grits to clean it. So you can raise the back ones up and down pretty easily with that? No, no. It all stays level. You just don't turn them on. Oh, you just don't turn them on. Gotcha. Yeah, you just don't use them. You only turn on what you need to use. So we turn the 60 on, we clean it, turn mm -hmm. the 60 off. Turn the 80 on, and the 80 and 180 finishes it. Because the, the final sandpaper won't do anything to epoxy. Yeah, for sure. Just, it'll, just, it'll tear the paper up. So... Um, and with that, with only one head. Steel, going, Steel and Grains commenting down here. So you can just run one head at a time, question mark. I didn't know um, you could do that with a three belt. Why? Yeah. Um, I'm not even rolling this up. Um, geez, I'm, I'm, yeah, you could just run one head at a time. I have three heads, you can run one head at a time. Um, and I put 60 on first because there's sometimes when um, there's a fine grain, there's a crotch on yeah. the board. And, you know, you put it through the, the planer and it's, there's tear out. Oh, massive tear out. Yeah. So what happens is I only put it through the planer enough to get it flat. And then you and get I all the tear it, out out. Yeah. And yeah. then I put it through... Um, um, then I put it through 60 and that cleans it. It said, doesn't the 60 scratch if you're running the next grit? No, because as sandpaper works, one grit removes yeah. from the next. And, and even when 60 runs through, 60 runs through and it's flat. You know, yeah. let me tell yeah, you. The table itself is flat. It's, yeah. Yeah, the, the 60 runs, it, it runs through, it's flat, it's clean, it's just rough. Yeah. There's no sanding marks in it like there's sanding marks when you do it with a sanding machine. Yeah. No, it's not that. And let me tell you, man, the, the crazy part is I bought this sander, I bought this dust collector three years ago. When I purchased this machine, it wouldn't fit in my building. <laughs> yeah. No, the three heads are not adjustable. They, they stay flat. You turn on, you use them one at a time, what you need. This, it, it, it's... One spins and the other one doesn't. It's all level. They're not adjustable. So when I when I first bought the sander, the, I, it wouldn't fit in my, inside the building, <laughs> right? So I had to put it in my yard. So it was in my yard for almost a year. You had it covered. Was it underneath your, your greenhouse thing? No? <laughs> that's why the belt broke. Uh, that's why your belt was broken not too long ago. <laughs> That's why it broke. <laughs> I have my big dust collection there. Uh -huh. Because in the greenhouse, it was full of wood. Yeah. And you know, the plan, and, and it's so crazy because then I had a fire. Yeah, 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 I remember. Yes, the, the last one has a, the um, plants. This is the last one uh, still a great. So after I move into the new shop, right, I go, okay, um, um, now it's time to move this thing. What is 26,000 pounds? Good Lord. The first guy was like, it's $2,500 to move it. And I'm like, what? How so much you, course, if you don't mind me asking, how much do you pay for that thing right off the bat? When you found it on the IRS auction? Three, three grand. Oh my God. I paid three grand for the sander and I paid three grand for the dust collection. But you know why it was three grand, right? Because it was 26,000 pounds? <laughs> Let me tell you, this is the second sander that I purchased. Uh -huh. The first sander I purchased was an old one that was a lot smaller. It was a forehead and it was 53 inches. Okay. It was in Georgia. Drive so, all the way down there and get it? Well, the rigger wanted $3,000 to put it on a truck to get it here. That's not to get it here. That's the sit it on the truck. I paid 700 bucks for that one. So, same, same IRS auction? 
Yeah. So I need I need to get on the IRS auction sites again. So I stopped looking at them. I just got tired of it. So, um, I told the guy, so you can keep it. <laughs> so I'm not gonna pay you three grand to sit it on there and pay the trucker twenty five hundred dollars to get it here, truck. But that um, that sander was a monster. It was a, it was it was it was a monster, and it was the one right. Um, um, that that just like this one, it spins, and then it moves, and, and it oscillates. Uh huh. Um, so I waited, and I got this one, and I get this one. In, Somebody said I'm writing one, notes. <laughs> and I'm this actually one, just drinking. This one um, sat in here for a year, and it's and it's because you get so busy moving around and doing the stuff until you don't you you don't stop long enough to think. Okay, let me get this play together. Let me get the team together so we can go and make this touchdown. Yeah. You're too busy running around in a two-minute drill. That's interesting. So, so you know, I told you I have a, a, a coach that I've been working with, a business coach and kind of consultant strategy guy. He, one of the things that I, I've really been spending a lot of time with is uh, priorities of what we do. So there's a – there's a imagine like a, a, a grid like this, right? Right. Imagine – up here in this top corner are things that are important, but unurgent. Okay. And then imagine in this corner, things that are urgent and not important. And then down here, things that are urgent and important. And then things down here that are not urgent and not important. Okay. Right. Where would you spend percentage wise most of your day? The majority of people spend it in this urgent zone. You know, 70% is urgent. I bet you probably over half of that is urgent and unimportant. Like the client that calls and freaking out that you stop what you're doing as opposed to, to the things that really push your business forward and continue to, to grow yeah. in the right direction. You're, you're correct. And, just, and, just, we, it, we get back to and if you can spend 50% of your day on things that are important and unurgent, that's that's the thing that that's the game changers. There, there, never. If if you do that, things will never become urgent. Yeah, exactly. And let me tell you, the the one of the things that that I've learned to have a problem with. You have to make sure that there's there's a relationship with your clients, and you are in control, and not them. Yeah. Because you you see your big picture, they don't. They're only worried about they're only worried about their thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that when you deal with them, it's business, and and you and it's and it's a straight line. Yeah. Like let me give you an example. There, there's a client that just contacted us. They didn't. We, we've been talking for a few months about some antique timber for um for pool house. Right. So they keep saying, "Oh, we got time. We got time. We got time." Well, the plans change from a standard measurement of a 10 by 10 yep. to now it's 10 by fives. So what happens is all of those 10 by fives, I have to now mill mm -hmm. and then bring it to the shop, join, surface, and square up. It's not like the, the, the standard timbers, the 10 by 10s, I can take it, run them on the jointer, and then they're fine. It's, it's a completely different job now. Yeah. And I'm like, well, when do you need this? Oh, we got about six weeks um, um, considering when things open up. Now, you know what's going to happen? Things are going to open up sooner than that six weeks. And they're going to call freaking out. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why I was very clear. I said, just so you know, I'm going to need every single of those six, every single one of those six weeks. And everything is in paper. Everything is in writing. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes back, they just want it now. And, and what happens? Everyone. Is, yeah. I, I have a few clients that aren't like that right now, and they're they're the nicest tables. Like I'm building a desk. We're building a desk for somebody, and it's all uh, just. I'll show you some pieces of it out there. Yeah. Um, and it's it's all, you know, solid, just gorgeous maple, and it's it, the there's two banks of drawers, and they're going to be flipped open and book matched. Uh, the two different banks, the opposite mirror images of it, and then the door pulls. He's giving me deer deer antlers that he's uh, that he shot, 
and nice. uh, I'm going to attempt to just turn all the door, door pulls out of the deer antlers and stuff like that. I'm going to play around with it. I'm hoping okay, cool. he says it's solid through, but like a, a guy like that is the dream client because, and he's going to get the best quality product because he's not giving me timeline. Like, yeah, he wants it done and he'd like to use the thing. Right. But he's not like freaking out over timelines and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a catch 2020. Um, I, I try to make sure that we, we cover everything and meet the, meet the timelines, even when they're short, mm -hmm. because sometimes a lot of the jobs are short timeline jobs. Well, and what I found is a lot of the restaurants though, and this is probably pretty bad and hopefully none of my restaurant people are, are, are watching this, but I, I have never had, and, and you might be different because you're in New York City, but I don't know if I have ever had a restaurant, all of those restaurants that we've done, meet open on the timelines that they've given me. And, and it, it, it seems, I don't know about you, but it seems that people are contact me mm -hmm. and Um, so where I said the, um, antlers. Yeah, um, I saw that. That's, that's a good note. Thank yeah. you. What, what I've gotten is all of those, most of the restaurants that have contacted me mm -hmm. had very short timeline and they waited to the last minute to order tables. Yeah. Um, so you want to do a shop tour? Yeah. Um, yeah no, yeah, Derek, I don't regret that five head. Yeah, let's give a tour. We got okay. about three minutes. Um, so right off the bat, we just kind of built this little spray room the other yep. day. So you can see we've got quite a few tables. Like here are some of the reclaimed oak tabletops that we're building in here. And I just, I've, I've kind of like, that's become our specialty. You know, we're not doing fancy stuff. I literally, I love letting the wood just speak for itself. So yep. we, we kind of throw that. It tells you where to go. Yeah, we throw that 4,500 CFM fan in the door over there, and we're good to go. This was Make it work. this was pre-COVID. This was kind of like a little bit of a showroom that we had set up in here. Um, yeah, you want to talk about drum sanders? I hate this thing, man. We've got one of those Performix double head things. Super max. So I, we got to get a wide belt sander. Yeah, you can get a sing you can get a single head wide belt sander that's not too expensive. Yeah, I, that's that's next up on our tool list. But I mean, most of the stuff we we use, um, we've got this super old school rock wall thing. We've that's got good. that. Um, this is great. I bought the combo unit just so we had a twelve inch surface joiner. Nice. Um, and then you know, we've got a saw stop sitting over there too. That thing's been yep. set off twice. Walker, one of my guys, cool. did it the first time. I did it the second time. So um, we've got all, this place is kind of big. We use this thing where I actually really saw a, a clamp table the other day. Uh, I really want to get a JLT clamp rack too. That's kind of next yeah. up on our list. But I'm one of those guys that's just like, hey, you got to get it done. We just let's just get it done. And that's we'll what that's what I'm about. Yeah, we got, we got 60 seconds. Um, little welding area over here you know i just use a, a 210 power mig we've got yep. a big cold saw that thing's like perfect um are we running out of the hour do you want to hook back up again yeah we could do it you know what let's do that let's okay. um let's let's hop off and hop right back on okay we'll be off another 10 to 15 perfect so we can get a a, a a shot of your yard cool perfect all right guys we're gonna hop on and hop right back off hop off and hop right back on All right. All right. So I'm going to show you in here, too. Uh, little office. It's my other guy, PJ. What's up, PJ? He said, what's up, PJ? Um, this place keeps on going. This doesn't have any kind of AC, but, like, just more storage of just stuff. Man, um, nobody got no AC. <laughs> we got AC in the rest of the shop, man. It's nice. That is nice. Um, this is the thing that's really great. What's up, Kingfish? Actually, I'll show you this from outside. Yeah, take us outside. So, oh, I don't have much outside, it's man. It, it's, um... New Panda, Open Nice stuff. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, it's not going to be disappointing looking outside. Um, here's a little waterfall. Look at that cutie. Yeah, that thing. We're going to... I'm going to have a 
it's going to end up getting a drawer across here on right. it. You can kind of see the backside we, we capped off. So you can. Okay, so how, how do you get to wood? So there's a few different things. Oh, uh, I have a company. This is a, this is pretty interesting. This is a 10 by 48 conference room table uh -huh. that we're, that we're doing, but the base for it is actually, we put the table over top of it. Uh, it's going to be an asymmetrical base that's bolted to the floor. So that's, that'll get bolted. And then that thing right there. So it'll be cantilevered. This gets bolted to the top of it. So there's only one leg for the whole thing. And it's on the first third. Nice. Um, so wood, uh, here, here's, let me show you some of our wood too. Um, we just had all those tables spread out in here. That's why the shop looks really bare and empty right now. So they're getting, they're getting ready to be finished. So this is what we mainly use. This is all reclaimed, uh, you know, just oak that's been pulled down from barns and, and cabins and buildings and stuff like that across the region. So I just, it has a lot of character and I love working with it. Um, now, you, you, you get this from wood reclaimers? Yeah, so I, I actually started, um, I started tearing down property myself. Okay. Um, and I just found that there's just not, there's not enough time to do that and build stuff out of it. So I, it's a I completely, found, it's, it's a, it's a completely separate job. It really is. By the time you denail everything. And then in the very beginning, some of the stuff I did wasn't kiln dried. I actually had one, um, marketing firm that I had built some shelves for and they ended up getting, uh, about three years after, um, after we built this stuff, we had uh, beetle larva hatch in it. And so, so, they, so could hear, they could hear it chewing in the wood. So we went out there, we built 20 desks for them, and then we built three shelves and a uh, kitchen table and a conference room table and stuff like that. Luckily, it was the first batch of wood that we had. And so we ended up out going out there and pulling down the shelves and then taking the, um, the kitchen table that we had built and we, um, we replaced all of that stuff for him. Okay. And with, with stuff that had actually, at this point, it was three years later, everything that we had been using by that point had, has, has been kiln dried at now. Um, especially with the, with the reclaimed stuff, just cause there's so many bugs and you just never know what's inside of it living. So, I mean, that so stuff wasn't even alive. It was larva that hatched three years after we built the stuff right what how do you kill dry do you have a kill uh i've got another another furniture maker nearby that does it and then okay. the place that we get the wood from now is a place up in stewart's draft virginia it's called appalachian woods and they've become great friends of ours um we've got kind of a wholesale deal set up with them they build hardwood floors uh, and they ship hardwood floors across the whole country. So we go over there and they let us purchase the lumber from them before it starts getting milled. So, and they, and they denail it and they put it through their kiln. So that, that's good. Yeah. So just find, it's being, at the end of the day, it just comes down to being as resourceful as possible. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think what, what you do is very resourceful. And I, and I try to tell guys all the time, you know, Every body doesn't need a saw. Everybody doesn't need, everyone doesn't need to be set up like a, a, a huge business. The yeah. thing is to become resourceful and, and use your relationships, your networks to, to, to grow your business. So, so you were asking me about wood though. We have a lot of, um, like this is all sycamore that we had cut. We had a client call us locally in Virginia beach and they said, um, Hey, we're having a sycamore tree cut down in our yard. And I was like, great, we'll come mill it. And I have a local sawyer that I can call. He's got, you know, just a, a, a wood miser. He yep. comes out and mills it right there. We bring it back and we stack it up. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's yeah. all you need to do. You need to get some logs, have a guy come and mill it and sit, see you. You just, you can't overextend your capabilities. And I find myself doing that all the time. Uh, yeah. um, and I'm, there's I'm a big... day... There's a day where I want to have a I want to have a mill laid out in here, but for now I I use uh, a local guy around here, and then I have another really good friend of mine that I actually you know influenced quite a bit and inspired in the very beginning, uh, who's up in Richmond, Virginia, and he's got 
he he went and bought a Lucas Mill, and he's got a kiln. Uh, he's got a vacuum kiln. Okay, he's got an but, eye dry. But let me, and we let go me, we go buy a bunch of lumber from him now too. But okay, let me ask you. Do you need a mill? Um, we turn down a lot of wood. People call us constantly about logs. That doesn't mean you need a mill. <laughs> that means you need. So maybe a, I don't. You need a mill. That means you need you need a mill. You don't. Like steel and grain doesn't have a mill. Yeah. Steel and grain gets it milled, and this guy's got a ton of wood. Yeah. And, and my, and my, the point that I'm making is that when I talk to Matt tonight, we're going to talk about about his mill. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we got two conversations. One about him, and the second one about the, the second one's about the mill. And I thought about building a bigger mill, but I'm like, why? Get his. That, that the yeah. same thing about the resources. But the thing I'm saying is that. If well, at the end, long, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it comes down to analyzing your business too. Exactly. So if if you, I, I don't, and I say, you know, there's a day that I'd like to have one. If the day comes where the mill, the amount that I spend on milling and is more than what it would cost me to have a to buy a mill and then, then also, you need a mill. and also pay for the person to run the mill, then I then I need a mill, and exactly. I, for, I I foresee that happening as we continue to grow. Um, but right now, yeah, 100%, we don't, we don't need one right now, for sure. Yeah, and, I, and that's what I'm saying is that if you don't have to turn down logs. Yeah, I mean, I, I had, so, so there's, that's a, a pretty cool birch uh, that got this really cool, it's going to be gorgeous benches that we, that we did the other day. Um, hopefully nobody, uh, I, well, not hopefully, people from Virginia Beach aren't like, oh, that's what that pile of crap is sitting out there. Uh, we just had some, some walnut milled up a few months back. So, and there's some, some pretty good wide boards in there. Um, you know, we've got that stuff. There's uh, How big is your lot? I have a good sized lot, man. I, I actually got pretty lucky. We are, we are at the oceanfront, resort town in Virginia Beach. Um, let me, let me hold on. Let me I'm going to turn you. it the other way so I can actually point this out. You, so this let is... Tell, let me tell you what I'm thinking right now, right? Yeah. You can put three or four containers in there, baby. Yeah. So we've got some other terms, uh, plans that we're going to do, but we've got, you know, quite a bit of space. So what are you, you going to do? Um, I'm trying to work that out with my landlord right now. So they were going to knock this building down. Um, here, I'm going to walk around. I, th I think you'll appreciate this. This is why I'm in this building that I'm at right now. Um, so, you know, if you're a big Pharrell fan, uh, we've got something in the water festival that started happening here not too, last summer. And hey, listen, let me tell yeah. you something. Let me be honest with you. I'm not a big Pharrell fan. <laughs> you just knew he was Beach. from here. Pharrell's from Virginia Beach, so I played the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got something well, coming up from that, too. Well, did you, did, have you heard of the something in the water festival that we did? No. That, that he did? So he started a music festival last year here. And, I have uh, heard that. I heard that. It, it was huge. And this year, it was supposed to be even bigger. It had to get canceled because of COVID. Right. Um, but this is our building. Nice. Okay. And this, this road right here that I'm, that I'm pointing out. Right. Like, see that hotel down at the end of the street? That's, yep. that's, the, beach. that's the beach right there. Nice. So this road is the main interstate that comes into Virginia Beach. And we had about 20 million people drive by it last year. Um, that said, so, do, so that, do you, that, do that you, said, I got lucky by getting into this building because they were planning on knocking it down and they're not a hundred percent sure what they're going to do with it. So, so, so we're so, working on some stuff. <laughs> so when, when that traffic comes, do you set yeah. your furniture up outside on the sidewalk? Yeah. So I, I started showing you, uh, I've got a, I've got a display window in there. I don't set stuff outside and try to sell it. I probably could. I've never even thought about that. If you got 20 million cars coming down the street, why not? That's a annually, annually. Oh, annually. Annually, yeah. On the weekend. Yeah, no, I, it, it probably would be beneficial. <laughs> I, I, we have. I say that though, we've had a hard time keeping up with what with. So I've been pretty lucky with our business. Like, we we've been even through this whole COVID thing, we've been extremely busy. Um, and we continue to grow year over year over year. Because if, if you have a hard time keeping up, it means you need to hire someone else. Yeah. That's all that means. Yeah. Don't, don't start your growth 
courts, you know, we're not talking about growing yourself out of business, but if, if you have, well, and that's, and that's the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to avoid doing right now is growing myself out of business. You know, I'm trying to do it very organically and slowly. Like I've, I've talked to different people about bringing on investment money to buy all the tools that we need to do and really pump things up. But then I, I just, I want to make sure that it's done right and that we're keeping our cash flows correct and everything else like that and our forecasting and our budgets and, and everything. So I, you know, let, let, me, let me tell you, I think all tell that's me. great. I think all that's great. Uh -huh. Man, sometimes you got to go. You got to push. Yeah. You, you, if, if, if the business is trying to grow, let it grow. We, we so, were, we so were here's stuck. a question for you. How, how many clients do you currently have right this second? Like orders on the books? 40? Wow. Now, let me tell you this, though. We have a sheet. I don't have it here. We have how, a sheet. How, how booked out is that? Three months? Okay. But remember, a lot of, we, we, that's, that's, you said, all clients, that's small and, and, and large stuff. Yeah. We, we, we could, and I probably shouldn't say this, we could finish the table four days, five days. Yeah. But the point is, it has to go in the queue. Yeah. You can't walk in the door and get the tables five days later. No. The guy that came to me two months ago is, is we're, we're being he's at, the, he's at the back of the list. Right. So, so I have to put the wood in the kiln, take the wood out the kiln, let the wood sit. We have to work on it. We're working on other stuff. And what, and what you get, we have a six to, six to 12 weeks. And what that is, is a commitment to mm -hmm. do the work. So we have bigger jobs that come in um, that actually take the, the eight to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if, you, okay, I was, I was telling you, we, I was in 45 Sawmill River Road. We had a shop that was 1,200 square feet, 12 okay. feet wide by 70 feet long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we you talking about that. We were in there for that. so long, four years, until our stuff was in the hall. We were <laughs> scared to grow bigger than we could have. So we stayed there. Hmm. It hurt us. We immediately moved into a 5,000 square shop and that mm -hmm. was too small. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're, this place is about 3,700 with that space that we're not using in the back. Yeah. And, and, and we max it out when we're, when we're like this restaurant, like we literally just stacked up all those tables and got them out of the way, but we, we're using every inch of it. Right, but what I'm saying is with that lot you got, you can put a couple of 20 foot, 40 foot containers in there and that's a lot more space you have. Yeah. And not to mention one of them could be a kill. Yeah, for sure. This, this, this is later down the road. I'm just yeah, definitely. That, yeah. Don't, if, if the business wants to grow, let it grow and manage it. Do you have a, let me ask you this. Yeah. Do, do you have anyone else doing your sales and stuff for you, with you, helping you? Are you doing every single order that, that goes, all those 40 orders that you guys have in the, in the system right now? You mean, what do you mean? Um, like just put, putting together the quotes and doing the, the paperwork on all that stuff? No, um, Jackie handles that in the office. She takes care of that part. But I'm, yeah. I'm out to sell it. A lot of that stuff just comes in. You know, we deal with the clients. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not knocking on doors. Yeah. Everything comes online. Yeah. yeah with every, with, not everything. Stuff comes in online, but a lot of it is word of mouth. And we have, we have designers that we work with. Yeah. So, so a lot of stuff is built in. But you, you do need, do, do you have someone in, in, in the I office? don't have an office person. I'm, ju I'm juggling all that stuff myself. See, that's, that's not sales, man. That's not yeah. sales. We're talking about bookkeeping. <laughs> you yeah. need that. Yeah. You need that. Well, I, I, have, I have a bookkeeper that I have hired. So, I, have, uh, I, have, I have an accounting firm and, and they do bookkeeping and all that kind of stuff. So that side of it's done, but it's just like, just the, the constant interaction with clients and uh, no, the, no, but that, that's what, no, that, that person does all of that. Yeah. The, the person that's in your office, they take care of all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You need an office person to help you deal with the clients and the orders and managing the orders and the workflow and, and all of that stuff. It's too much. It's, no, it's, way, it's too much. It's way, way too much. It's, it's, 
it's two of us and it's too much. We're probably, <laughs> we're probably two people short. Yeah. Because you have to actively have someone doing the sales. You have to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I sell lumber. There are only a few people that I actually sell lumber to. Yeah. My, my business has been, has sustained itself without me uh, knocking on doors selling lumber. Now, if I had someone in sales, I'd probably tell them, you know, let's contact every furniture guy in the city, which is a lot. So we can get them in to sell lumber. Are there that many guy furniture guys in, in the city still? <clears throat> okay. I was up there not too long ago and I couldn't find anybody really. It seemed like a lot of it, like, no, it seemed like a lot true. of people had moved, had moved out and it was just storefronts. It wasn't actually guys building like it used no, to be. The, in Brooklyn, there's a, there's a Navy building. That's a big building. There's a lot of builders in there. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a lot of guys all over. Interesting. All over. More, more people are moving, getting priced out. Yeah. But yeah, there, there are a lot of people. Like, I'm not in the five boroughs. I'm in Yonkers. Yeah, where, where is Yonkers? Um, right above the Bronx. It's okay. connected to the Bronx. Okay. Um, so it's on the water. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I came up there and went to um, BDNY, Boutique Design New York City. Okay. It was at the Jarvit Center. Jarvit Center. Okay. But it was a hospitality and a hotel, motel, tourism type thing, but uh, restaurant design and everything. And there was like, it was massive. The thing was huge. It was a big trade show, retail show. And I mean, okay. just there, there was just so much potential. Yeah. But you need help to help you explore that potential. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you can't, you need help. You need to offer yourself, even if you have someone a couple of days a week. No, that's next up. On, it's, it's, that's the next employee hire for sure. Yeah. And it's, um, um, it's, it's a lot. It's, there, there are things that I want to do that not having another person prevents the growth that we have. So when do you get another person? Um, I need to do it now. Yeah. You know, I, I, we go hold each other accountable to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I had an office guy uh -huh. who's a project manager who's very, very smart. Okay. But he was horrible with people. Okay. And because he was so smart, I took, to check, I took, I hired him for this. I hired him for his potential. I kept him way too long for his potential. He wound up costing me so much money. Yeah. So much money. Um, I I had a girl that was helping me last year that it was the same scenario. Yeah, and and and, and you and you have to. I mean, the guy was super educated. He worked in the industry. He knew how to do shop drawings. I mean, he all of this stuff. But he was just a he was just a, he was just a bad person, mm -hmm. and and this is the thing where you would hire someone and train them, um, and you I like I, I like this Helmwood down there hire hire yes. slow fire fast. Yeah, that's that's I, I was a victim of that with this guy. Uh, Six I've, months. I've, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and it, it, it's just it, it was. Um, it just it wasn't it wasn't right, so uh, I'm uh, I'm missing the office. But like for example, right, I should be sending out newsletters constantly with all the work that we're doing. I should be updating the website constantly with all the work that we're doing. Someone emailed me, and they said, "Oh, um, so much yes, easier right? said than done." <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone emailed me, right? And the guy goes, "Oh, um, I told him to take a look. I said, take a look at the website. Let me know what you want." He goes. The website says 2014, 2016, 2017, uh, because I hadn't updated it. I said, yeah. yeah, man, but the wood had changed colors. <laughs> water so, still so, water, oak is still oak. But so the that, point is, that I said, be updating it sooner. That goes back to the things that, you know, and, and this is, I think, something both of us can, can hopefully take away. And I, I think we do need to hold each other accountable to this, is that urgency and important thing. The stuff that we're talking about doing, updating the site, those are the marketing tools that drive more sales, but you have to have the sales system 
in the sales process. And I think that's my problem right now. Like I've got the shop process. These guys are pretty good out there. I, I typically am not spending as much time as I was in the shop itself. And I'm going from, nobody tells you, everybody tells you your cakes are the best cakes in the world. So everybody tells you to open a bakery. They don't tell you you have to be a salesman and a marketing person and a HR person and a accounting person. So right now what we're trying to go through is our sales process and I need to get that dialed in. So there's a system in place so that somebody can come in and, and, and I can set them up for success with it. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it's, 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 because I've, I've done, I don't know about you, I've done zero marketing. I don't put any money into my marketing ad. I've run a couple, I've run a couple Facebook ads and I've gotten results from them or Instagram ads and I've gotten results from them. We sold a couple tables from them, but I'm like, well, man, I could really capitalize on this and grow things quite a bit more if I got this other stuff in place. The, the, the marketing I've done is I did advertising for the conversation page. That wasn't about, um, the woodworking that was about hmm. me wanting people to come to the conversation it's good it's great um but no it's i've been fortunate you know we've worked hard mm -hmm. and and um and it's worked out i mean I, I i i'm now getting better at um at posting um matt still the <laughs> grain those guys do great at that I, i'm and, so bad at it <laughs> and and no, no let me let me tell you something I was one of these people, right? I, I, I deal with depression, anxiety. I'll go up and down. I'll go up and I'm, down. I, dude, I'm right there with you. So sometimes I'll post, sometimes I won't. And I'm like, how do I have the time? Another one, not him. That dude, I'll make some content off of picking up and taking a picture of a boy. <laughs> and, and, I, and I laugh. But it's what people want to see. Yeah. And, and you got to give them what they want to see. Yeah. Even... When you get a draw to your, to your page, right? It's like when rain falls. It's raining, and not all drops that hit you, but some of them will. Yeah. And that's what you want. You need that traffic because out of that traffic comes something else. For sure. And I've tried to be more personal, uh, more open, and more... Um, uh, descriptional and, and posting and it, it, it's, it's working out. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's getting better, but you have to do it. Yeah. You, you have to do it. Um, I mean, even with the conversations, I, I noticed when, when, when the people post on that page, it's different than when people post in the stories. I do both. Mm -hmm. When people post on that page, it brings, that many more people, and when people post in the stories, it, it's it, it's it's a smaller draw. The good thing is, it's on a it's on a page, and you can go back and see it. Mm -hmm. So anyone can can see it whenever they want. But there is something to this this content, the marketing, and put stuff on social media. Yeah. Oh, there, for there sure. Is. I I took it I took it lightly for too long. I, I've been in the same boat with Caleb where, you know, where he was talking about he'll go like months without posting sometimes. Like I, I had to unfollow, not unfollow, not unfriend, but unfollow a, the big majority of the people that I have on my, um, that I, that I actually follow because I just found myself like getting sucked into that trap of scrolling all the time and looking through stuff. Which to what you were saying about depression and anxiety, it's really easy to start comparing your life to somebody else's life when you're when you're mindlessly doing that and you're not conscious about what you're looking at. Um, so, and, and I I found myself going down that road where I've really had to take a conscious step back from it and, and say, okay, I'm going to post stuff, but I'm going to leave it at that afterwards. I'm going to post it. I'm going to leave it at that. Like, what's my intention behind doing this stuff? Now, okay, this, this, this is um, still the grain says, stories for me are great for my hardcore work fans, mostly other um, woodworkers. Yeah, um, we're still the grain, dude. You got so many followers. Most of those damn people ain't woodworkers. <laughs> he's, he's, probably, <laughs> he's damn near 200,000 followers. Those ain't woodworkers. Those are people who want to see your content. Yeah. They just want to see the process. Do you, you have him? Do you have him as an, on an interview process? Of 
course. Okay. Of course. What, what, I, I, I don't know. All the, you have so many phone people. Phone. You have so many people. I got no clue. Because I love them all. I know. They're Ray good. It's building 20 foot tables out of a five foot telephone booth. Of course, I want to talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, first of all, uh, I, I, hey, I, I, I ask that because I look forward to it. it. It'll be a good conversation to hear. Uh, he said, not only 10% of them see, hit, see my stuff and they're all woodworkers. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he has a ton of people. Okay, look. Um, let me go, let me go back to this one. Um, I don't try real hard with posting content mainly because I know most of my followers are other woodworkers. Meaning, if uh, it won't necessarily bring business, but it builds community. Don't 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 buy that. Don't buy that. People, I okay, let me let me tell you something. Right. The reason why I moved to the conversation page. It's because I don't want all of you damn people on my main feed still in my business. <laughs> that's, that's the main reason I put the conversations page so this is in a neutral place. I don't put my personal stuff on the conversation page. It's a neutral place about conversations. Yeah. So just imagine if I got all of you all stuff on my page while people come to see my work, I'd never get another business. I'd never get any more business because there's all of these choices and there's confusion and there's this clutter. Yeah. So, um, uh, DeGarmo, you do get work from Instagram. That's how people, businesses have grown. Don't sleep on that. Ask, steal, and grain. This guy used to call me, he used to email me all the time talking about he wanted big walnut, big walnut, big walnut. So now he's got it. But a lot of it has grown. He, he's in PA, in the Amish country. Yeah, I was about to ask you where, where Steel and Grain was. Yeah, he's in he's, PA. He's up in PA. Exactly. So he's getting work all over the country now. And that's because he's grown his Instagram. And he does a great job with it. Hey, here's a good question for you. And, and maybe Steel and Grain will chime in on this one, too. I have a table, a coffee table that I, I need to ship to L.A. right now. And I, like, I just can't figure out this shipping thing and how to get prices like affordable in in the realm of shipping okay you guys um, have have any good recommendations any good wh where should i where should i really search you know what should i dive into there there's there some shippers first um um first you need to be able to weigh mm -hmm. your material you need to tell you need to build a, a crate and you yeah. need to weigh yeah, for sure. FedEx, UPS, all those people a uh, ship. I mean, it was like coming back like almost as much as the damn table to ship the thing. It was like sometimes. Yeah, it was crazy for a conference room or not a conference room table, a coffee table. Yeah. Now this person here says I use you ship blanket wrap. It sounds that sounds pretty white glovish. Um. Yeah, I'm still raised up. I always ship freight. On a um, on a pallet, all created up and wrapped up. Yep. Through through FedEx and uh, UPS, steel and green. No, look, this guy here says dressing from Florida to LA only five hundred bucks. Huh. Yeah, it's not that expensive to ship. Now let me let me um, go back to um, furniture by Jim. Yes, it's it's. Um, I will take your word for it. It hasn't happened yet. Not yet doesn't mean never. It just means not yet. So when it does happen, be prepared. So, girl, get that camera going and start building content. Who are you talking to? Furniture by Guillermo. She's a boss. You should check her stuff out. I'll check her stuff out. I've never seen her before. He says he has a YRC terminal two miles from my shop, so I can take stuff there. I get a pallet most anywhere, 500 bucks. Yeah. Keith Godchild, what's up, my brother? Now, Keith ships, too. Keith, Keith is a turner. He's a, he's a world-class turner. He ships... Keith, you got any recommendation? We're talking about shipping stuff. Um, bigger stuff. Bigger stuff. Yeah, big, small, he does it all. But yeah, build a crate <laughs> and ship. Build a crate and ship. Yeah. It's, through it's FedEx. Not that expensive. Through, yeah. Yeah, I don't Do know why. This, to, I, I, I mean, I was, going through, I was going through FedEx and, or UPS or one of those, one of those two, and uh, it was coming back at like twelve, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 to ship a coffee table all the way no, to California. Freight, freight quote. I think freight quote is who we use. Freight quote. Okay. Yeah. Give me a shout. I'll give it a shout. 
She takes care of us. Hey, do we want to, I mean, does, does anybody else have any questions on there? You want to give them the opportunity? They're probably going to be directed. I'm at read, I'm, yeah, I'm reading the questions. Here's the ship we're use out of Michigan. Um, this will work, yeah. There's a lot more, a lot more ads on, on IG. What up, Eric? Because it works. There's ads on IG because it works. Uh, first of all, the girl, I need to ship from Santa Fe, from Minneapolis, and I'm a bit sticker shocked. No, it shouldn't be that expensive. What kind of what prices are you getting? Hey, I was sticker shocked too. Yeah, don't just take the step. Don't be afraid. Is is that for me or you? Um, he said, when you jumped into the business, how long did it take you to stop um, turning a profit? Two, wow. 2000 is a lot. <laughs> Dude, you, sh you should know by now that I always have a beanie on and it is, six, it is 50 degrees outside right oh, now. Oh, don't, don't go, don't go Plycon. <laughs> Plycon is very expensive. Oh, Keith, Keith has hookups. Uni shippers to get quotes, but I can't get a big truck to my shop. It's easy. Oh, he goes to the terminal. Um, Stealing things? grain, dropping all the knowledge. I can't, I can't wait till y'all's conversation. That'll be good. Yeah. Tell you, he's, he's a front. He's front <laughs> like he's his little bitty company working in his little phone booth. He's a big baller. <laughs> um, how long it took me to turn a profit? Three, four years. Now, okay, let me okay, let me say this. Let me let me say this. It is eleven thirty, so we're gonna give this ten minutes. At ten forty, we're gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna ask cool. that question. I'm gonna walk back inside too. Yep. The the thing that I was I was able to do was I always found a way to make it work. Like when yeah. when when I bought my machines, I bought my machines before I had a shop. Before I thought I would have a shop, I bought them to go into my live and work loft in upstate New York. I bought a, a jointer. I had a jointer, a band saw, a table saw, a milling machine, and a big lathe. This was all in my, in, my, in my garage while I was building my house that I was working in. So when I first got my shop, it was 700 bucks. This was a 1,200 square foot place. It was 700 bucks, and we were that for four years. So that allowed me to really grow. Um, I think I was turning a profit, but we were putting everything back into the business. So I was just growing and growing and growing, buying more machines. Um, um, still a grain. I don't know if you know Eric Jacobson, furniture maker. He should be out there with you. I purchased a 30-inch jointer from him right and i found him on ebay and when i first when i first um and that's the guy you should follow he does a lot of hand carving and he does stuff right where he'll go into a museum he'll zone in on it then go home and comp and, and duplicate it wow he's, he's sick crazy but when i found him on 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 ebay he wanted 3500 bucks for the for the jointer, and I was like, um, listen, I don't have the $3,500, but I will pay full price. I just need time. He says, okay. So I think I sent him like 1500 bucks, sent him another thousand, <laughs> and four or five months goes by, he goes, hey, do you still want this? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I completely forgot. So I paid him the balance, and then we drove and picked it up. So all along the way, I figured out a way to, to get the machine I want at the price I want. And it was while the business was growing. So yeah. I, I think for me, probably the first couple of years, we turned a profit. But there was another direction I was trying to take the business in, which, which kept moving the needle further and further away. So, so I, 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 that same book that I was just talking about a minute ago, I read this and the guy said that is a delusional theory that business owners have 
when they take a profit and they put it back in their business, it's actually just an expense. <laughs> yes. That's you need it. You about. needed to buy those tools. I'm yes. in the same boat. When we were talking earlier about the mill, one of the things that I've always done is I started with the smallest thing possible. And I would tell this, like if, if anybody on here is listening and they have, um, and they have the desires to grow into doing this full time or to grow their business in, in, into a bigger place. I started out with DeWalt Sanders, right? Just a little ra random orbital, cheap, big box store Sanders and a belt grinder. And I bought stuff off Craigslist for super cheap. I bought a joiner and a planer and stuff like that. An old bell saw planer with a crank. It shot everything out the back of it. Um, and, and what I did, though, was you have to, you have to, um, you have to capture and measure anything. If you can't measure something, you don't know how well you're doing, so you don't know if you can grow or not. So what we do, and, and, and I started measuring how long it took each step of the process to take. How long does it take to pick out lumber? How long does it take to, to, to joint something, surface joint it, to edge joint it, to run it through the planer, to, to glue it up, to run it through, um, you know, the, yeah, the, the epoxy process, right? And that's how you price a job, exactly. But when, you, but when you're actually timing it like that, you also see where your weakness is and you see the best thing that you need to do. Like right now, we've been, we've been sitting here talking about a clamp rack in the shop with my shop guys. And, you know, we're looking at pricing things out and we're realizing that we don't need a clamp rack. We're still fine using our pipe clamps, even though we're going through them left and right. And it's, we're having to circle them and time them and pop them off after a certain amount of time. It'd be a lot more convenient to have a big J JLT clamp rack on the wall, but we need that wide belt sander more because you we do. can, we can cut down our amount of time sanding more than we can cut down the amount of time that we're going to be clamping stuff. So, yeah, yeah no, that, that's that. You know, and, and, and that's what happens when. And that started when that started with a with a DeWalt sander versus a Festool Rotex sander, which I still have not found a better hand sander to this day. And I've tried and nothing, nothing, nothing timeline wise gets gets any shorter than, than using that thing. Right. Hand and, and, and I think what happens right when we're smaller is that in, in Alan, um, A.A. A. Turner uh, tells me this. Um, you're too busy working in the business and not on, not the, business. on the business. 100%. Because, because when, you, when, you, when you work on the business, like me, you first get that wide belt sander and you hook it up in the shop ASAP. It doesn't sit in the shop for a year <laughs> while you're doing, you're making the money that it costs, you're doing the stuff, and then all of a sudden, you know, you get an aha moment and you turn on the sander. Yeah. It's, that, that was... That was poor, poor, poor judgment on my part. And there's a lot of times where I can call that. But, you know, when, when there's a job that needs to be done and there's a deadline that needs to be met, that to me is a priority. Mm -hmm. You know? But again, had that sound been working, I'd have met that deadline sooner. There's no, you know, it, it's, it's... It's that urgent stuff that's not important that catches you from... But if, you, if you're doing the unimportant and unurgent stuff, you're preparing for the stuff that we're talking about. Yep. We're going in a circle now. Right. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, any, any other questions? <laughs> I love my Rotex. Sleep with it. Brush my teeth with it. Um, um, yeah, but, you know, it's... Um, um, you know, and this, and, and this is, this is the thing that, this is why I want, we need everyone to advertise more about the conversations because all of this stuff, most people like you and I need to hear. Mm -hmm. That's why the guys like us had these, had these questions. So, um, and what, and what happens is it, it's kind of, it's good that you can catch it later, but it's better when it's live. Because yeah. you can get the different opinions on it. Yeah. And and that's and that's what you want. You want you want the most people at the at the same time giving their opinions because questions may be answered. Revelations um um occur. So but yeah, this this was good. I'm stoked on this, this man. This was great. This was good. So I good need to, to I need to come up there and come see you is what I need to do. 
Yeah. Check no, out the shop. And that's the whole point for, for us to do this, to get to know each other, because you check out the shop, check out the yard. Steel and Grain has a ton of material, mm -hmm. a ton. Um, there's a lot of us that, you know, that have stuff. How far, and, and, how far is he from you? Um, three, four hours. Okay. Um, yeah. I think, three, I, three. think it I think it'd take me probably seven hours to drive to New York City. Man, we, we, let me tell you this story. I posted a picture of... Um, yeah, you were down here not too long ago, weren't you? A wood miser. You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of, a, of, a, of a wood miser, old one. And it was, it, was in, it was in Virginia Beach. Man, these dudes, they were right next to the Walmart on, um, uh, on this little road a little private road that went back to their place. And them dudes were back there like it was deliverance. I don't know was, where that would be. It was, and, 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 and I don't know why that they were living the way they were in this big suburban area. Huh. But it, it was, they were bad. They so, were, they were, so do you, oh, well, I guess you probably wouldn't even want to say it on here, but do you remember their names? I don't. Because there's only a couple guys with sawmills around here. But the guy didn't use a sawmill. Hmm. It sat, it's, it's been in his yard for 20 years. <laughs> That's why I didn't buy it. I'm like, dude, I'm not giving you no six grand for this. I'm not That's... giving you four grand for this. For That's this funny. <laughs> hey, how about this? When's the convention retreat therapy weekend? <laughs> right? Oh, uh, that's um, great. So it took you about seven hours to get down here, though, right? Yeah. I feel, I feel so, like that's about right. Yeah. So, so we went there, right? Um, uh-huh. Didn't get that. We wind up going to D.C. and having dinner. Um, uh, amazing. It was Kwame. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a young African-American chef, but he's... Um, won awards, it, um, amazing food. It was an amazing meal. And it was right by the Navy Yard when they just rebuilt it. So that, that, okay. it actually turned out to be a nice trip. Good, good. Um, but yeah, that was, I drove all night to get that damn saw <laughs> and left it right there. Great. It was not worth taking home. <laughs> well, good um, stuff, man. All right, brother. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, thank it was you. A pleasure. And, and tonight we, we, um, 6 p.m. is Matt. One hour is going to be his story. The second hour is going to be just about the saw. So, um, yeah. So six hours of you drive night. Eric, you drive like a bat out of hell, man. I'm not going off your numbers. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, sorry, brother. Thanks, man. All right, dude. Thanks, Till bro. next time. Later. All right, brother.